Hello and welcome to the next part of the XT IDE series. If you didn't see the previous parts or didn't hear about XT IDE at all, I highly recommend to see the previous parts first. There I explained what XT IDE is, how it works, and showed multiple ways how it can be used. In this part, I would like to talk about the I.O. performance when using XT IDE and how you can vastly increase it very easily. For the showcase, I will use again the same 386 mainboard as in the last part with a simple IDE controller, compact flashcard as HDD replacement, the same network card with prepared XT IDE ROM and a VGA card. During the boot, you can see how XTIDE detected the compact flashcard as primary IDE device. To measure the I.O. performance, I will use Checkit. You can find the needed menu under Benchmarks Hard Disk. The test itself takes a couple of seconds and measures average I.O. throughput as well as the access time. We are using a compact flashcard, which is a lot faster by any means than a time-correct mechanical hard drive so it wouldn't be a bottleneck whatsoever. Anyway, we got about 800 kilobytes a second throughput and 2 millisecond access time. As you see, it is already ages ahead of the original XT values, but the throughput could be better. The access or SIG time, however, is already quite impressive due to absence of mechanical parts in the compact flash card. However, these values can be even improved quite a lot. Let's get to the memory layout just to verify that our XTIDE ROM is located at address C800. This seemed to be true. Time to reboot and do a tiny fix in a BIOS. This step is different for every mainboard, but in this BIOS we need to go into the submenu, Advanced CMOS Setup, and search for the entry Adapter ROM Shadow. It is important to choose the right address, C800, as set up in the network card for our XTIDE ROM. And this is it. Just save and reboot. What did we just do, you may ask? Here a short explanation. Every time our PC is accessing IDE, it goes through XTIDE, which is located in the EEPROM on the network card. This access is very time consuming and can be avoided. This is where so-called ROM shadowing comes into play, since it is possible to tell the system to cache the ROM in the memory on the first access, so any subsequent access will go to RAM instead of ROM, which is a lot faster. Back to check it, let's start our benchmark once again. Ready, the test itself went faster and as you can see we got twice the speed in the throughput and the access or seek time rose by a factor 10 from 2 milliseconds to only 200 nanoseconds. And believe me, this is not just a synthetic test, you feel this improvement quite a lot in the real life applications. System starts faster, games are loading a lot faster and so on. Small notice, not all mainboards allow to shadow any address, so you maybe will have to reconfigure your XT IDE location to fit your BIOS capabilities, but you'll not regret it. And this is it for this short video. Thank you for watching, please leave your feedback below and as always I hope to see you on my channel again. Thank you and goodbye.